Hi there, I'm Mark Waite and welcome to Mark My Words. On this channel, we help people fast track a comeback from a serious life setback. So if you've had one of those setbacks in life, you found the right channel. On today's video, I have a special guest. He's been an inspiration for me personally for some time now. Back when I was going through my life setback, uh, marriage and business collapse, I had to rebuild and part of my rebuilding journey was rebuilding me physically, in particular my nutrition. Chef Pete Evans was an inspiration to me and still is to this day. So I'm very excited to have him here today for an interview and I know he'll add some value to your life on your comeback journey. So please welcome Pete Evans. Pete Evans is an internationally renowned chef, restaurateur, entrepreneur, keynote speaker, best-selling author, television presenter, and documentary producer. He also has a podcast called Evolve with Pete Evans, exploring nutritional and emotional well-being. His passion for food and healthy lifestyles inspires millions of people around the world. So it's my honor today to welcome to Mark My Words, Chef Pete Evans. Hi, Pete Evans. So good to have you here, and thank you so much for your time today, mate. It's uh, I know you've got plenty on your plate right now, but uh, taking the time out to join us today for a, for a chat uh, around you and your life, uh, I really appreciate it, mate. Thank you. G'day, Mark. Thanks for having us on, and g'day everyone that's listening as well. Um, I've got my little dog, our little dog, Shakoba, here. So if you see me moving my hands below my, my waist, it's because I'm patting her. <laughs> Just, I like to get that out in the open to start with. <laughs> Yeah. Shikoba, she's cute. <laughs> she is very cute. She always um, she sits with me whenever I'm recording a podcast as yeah. as the interview. Uh, yeah, right. And uh, okay. Very rarely do I do interviews, so this is a, this is a new one for us. So this is great. Excellent, mate. Uh, look again. Um, we uh, this this is going to, into you know obviously uh, the, the hearts and lives of people who have been through. A life setback, right? And uh, as as um, as many of my viewers know, I went through a bit of a life challenge a few years back, back in two thousand and eight, just after the global financial crisis. And it, I felt like I'd had a knockout punch. You know, it was like physical, emotional, financial. Every area of my life was sort of. I felt like I'd been flattened, KO'd, knocked out. <laughs> and to be honest, I was happy to stay down for a little while, um, just to lick my wounds and just try and you know re regather what I've actually just trying to understand what had happened to me and also then to find the energy to get up and and to start to rebuild um i i have a heart and a soft spot to help people do just that and um i, I know i know f f you have a passion for wellness right i mean you you've dedicated your life to helping people obviously with food and m emotional physical wellness um and you've paid you know you've paid you're paying a price for that right now or at least it appears that way. Um, and uh, I firstly, just want to say to you, thank you for thank you for what you're doing. I know you're inspiring a lot of people, um, and people are coming out and, and praising you publicly. But there's even more people coming out and praising you privately. I, I know that for sure. So be encouraged, mate. I, I know that um, your best days are ahead. That's for sure. But what would you say to someone? I mean, I, I know you started a business when you were 19. You started your first restaurant back way back then when you were 19 years of age. What what inspired you to back yourself in, and and how has that how has that shaped you into the person you are today? Yeah, well, thank you for that uh, those kind words, Mark. Uh, so I just looked outside and I could see one of our horses rolling over it on the ground. It's always a great sight when you can see the horses having a little bit of a back rub out there. So keep going, uh, and that's probably the. Probably the message for everybody is to keep going. You know, yeah. it's to take the time. I'm watching them now. I wish I could show you what's going on there. But uh, it's like you said, you know, taking the time to have that time out, but then knowing when to get up. And he just hopped up back onto his feet then as well. So um, I'm always looking out into nature for inspiration. And, and when we start to cultivate this, we're always given the answers on our, on our own journey. Mm. And I think that's probably the, the, the 
deepest thing that I can convey today is if you are confused, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling lost, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling pissed off, if you're feeling any of these negative emotions, which we all feel, that's, you know, there's, there's no denying that we, we are human beings. We go through these. But what I have come to learn is that we will always be given the answers mm. to any of these situations if we're willing to take the time to be consciously aware of everything that is around us and inside of us. Mm. And that is what's called cultivating a sense of self and a sense of awareness and a sense of consciousness. And my number one piece of advice would be to, whenever you're feeling in those places, is to sit with it, understand what the emotion is, understand what that, that feeling is. And if you can detach from it and understand that it's not you it's just a, a, a it's an emotion it's energy in motion it's just something that's passing through you okay but it's a it but it's a bit of an alarm clock in there a bit of an alarm for you to take notice of that for sure okay and our bodies do that for us as well when we suffer disease that is only our body giving us the alarm bells to say hey listen you need to take notice of this and we will keep ringing the alarm bell until you do take notice of this. And same thing with our emotions. So going back to that is however you can cultivate awareness around yourself and inside yourself, you will always find the answers. It could be as simple as looking outside, taking a walk through nature, going for a, a swim on the beach or a walk along the beach and just noticing what do you see? What do you feel? What are you attracted to? What takes your attention in that moment when you might set the intention? Okay, today for the last few months, I've been feeling a little bit anxious. I've been feeling a bit lost. This COVID thing has really destabilized me, so I'm not feeling balanced. So set your intention. Today, I'm going to set my intention to find out if there are any answers inside or external that can help me find balance if that is what you're looking for and lo and behold i, I guarantee the answers will come yeah. and it could be through nature through animals it could be through a newspaper article you happen to read it could be through a person that you catch at eye with walking along the beach it could be an old friend that you haven't spoken to or a family member that re-enters your life that day that you haven't seen or heard of for, for decades or for years or for months. And they might say something to you that takes you down a path. It could be, Hey, I just read this book the other day about this person overcoming this, or have you seen this? So, so once we cultivate that awareness that the universe or in reality, we're always providing ourselves with what we need, right. whether we know it or not. Mm. Once we step into that space of, okay, each and every day, I am presenting to myself the answers that I need to evolve. Yeah. Then life becomes this great, not only mystery, but journey and adventure that mm. you are consciously co-creating. Mm. I don't believe in fate, but I do believe that we can co-create and create, manifest our own reality mm. and once we start to cultivate this you see these coincidences that they're not coincidences anymore they're actually sort of signposts right they're warnings they're, they're invitations they're opportunities they're offerings and i'll give you a great example so uh, the last couple of weeks you know i in the external world i have had many businesses that i've been working with for a decade, some more, some less. I think I had 10 or 12 of them publicly dump me within 24 hours of each other mm. for something that had nothing to do with me, that was misconstrued, misinterpreted, uh, sensationalized, creating a narrative that certain forces always wanted to have been pushing to create for me. And what I found fascinating about that was, again, I was like, okay, what, what's, what's going on here? Yeah. And I've 
been through enough journeys in my life to not be emotionally attached to any outcome. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to sit back and watch and observe what happens. Will any of the, and when it first started percolating, I was like, okay, I wonder if any of these companies are actually going to contact me personally. Mm. And after 24 hours, and I don't think anyone except one person that tried to email me, but they emailed to me, me to say they were dumping me. I was like, okay, well, this is interesting. What is this? Mm. My perception is these organizations and businesses, they only care about well, one of their priorities is money mm -hmm. because they were threatened with boycotts or whatever it may be from a very small number of people. And I'd witnessed this before with some of the work that I've done in, in other avenues where people had succumbed to bullying from a very small amount of people. And they were big organizations, yet they allowed the influence of just a few people to actually create their own reality for that organization or company, big company. I was like, this is fascinating. So what's underlying all of this? And my, this is just my perception. It's like, okay, well, they, they fear revenue loss. They fear brand assassination or whatever that is, or, or what the public thinks of them. And I was like, okay, well, this is fascinating because I don't fear any of those things. I don't fear loss of income. I don't fear loss of reputation. I don't fear what anybody has to say about me because that's other people's stuff. It's got nothing to do with me. But uh, when this was all playing out over the last, last two weeks, I was like, okay, well, this is another opportunity, another invitation to be more in alignment with people and organizations and companies that are at my level of perception of reality. And lo and behold, within 24, 48 hours of publicly losing a lot of relationships, new ones have entered. And each and every one of them that have invited me to form a relationship, have a conversation or a dialogue or connect are much more in alignment with hmm. the future yep. for, for myself and what I also think for the planet because they have no fear over those things that I just spoke about hmm. the other people and other organizations and companies having fear upon. Fear is still about. And when I actually take another step out and look at the population, and this is something that I've been witnessing all year, especially through social media, because people have said to me, I can't share what you share on my own public mm. social media platforms, my mm. channels, mm. because my family will get pissed off at me. My friends will think I'm crazy and I've lost it. Mm. My work colleagues, I might lose my job. And I've said to each and every one of them, I said, you do what you feel is right for yourself. Yeah. You don't have to do what I do. You don't have to reshare anything. I invite you to reshare if it resonates with you. But if you're not at that, yeah. that, that, that space in, the, in your journey of understanding that anybody that puts any negative perception on you is, is it's just their own fears, their own insecurities. It's got mm. nothing to do with you. No. You know, if, if you're willing, and I just wrote a post before we hopped on here because they're talking about mandatory vaccinations for children in Western Australia today. Mm. last yesterday in a newspaper article. Oh. So I shared that and I said, when it's your time, what are you willing to do? What are you prepared to do? Mm. You know, I'm not forcing anybody to do anything, mm. but I will always ask the question, what will you do? Mm. So, when we're talking about what you're sharing with the universe here, and uh, I commend you for that, Mark, is it's all about how to come back. And even that word come back could be misinterpreted. So, uh, taking a beating, so to speak, or having a, a terminal health diagnosis. You know, you have cancer, you have this many years to live. 
you have an autoimmune disease, this is your fate in life, you'll have to take this pharmaceutical forever, and then there will be side effects. And if you have an autoimmune disease, then you probably get a second and a third one in the next coming decade. If you lose your business, if you lose your marriage, if you lose uh, uh, whatever it may be, you know, these are heavy, heavy things that we, we experience. Mm. I do not know why we get to have to experience it. And some people get to experience a lot of pain in their life, you know, loss of a loss of a child, loss of a loved one, mm. sexual abuse, whatever it may be, you know, there's, there's, mm. there's no rhyme or reason to a lot of this, what happens in the world, right. how we at, react from it or how we come back from it or how, what we, how we live our lives from that. And I have to say, you know, I've had a very blessed experience mm. so far in this life. As you said, I opened my own business when I was 19 with my family. Yeah. Now it was great. I got to work 80 hour weeks, hundred hour weeks for 20 odd years. Yeah. And I learned how tough I could be physically, mentally. I've gone on a psychedelic or ceremonial journeys where I have put myself into situations to see how spiritually strong I can be. Mm. Can I face my own death and walk through that or experience that and go through that? Because I want to be liberated from all fear. Mm. So when things happen to me now in this ex experience of life, it's like, uh, that's nothing. <laughs> because <laughs> over the last couple of weeks I've had a lot of people go, are you okay? You know, this, yeah. are you okay? Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, I'm amazing. Mm. But they said, how are you dealing with this constant abuse and, and um, ridicule from the media? I said, well, you have to understand that what that is. You know, I just see the media or anything like that as a little bit of a fly that mm. comes in and buzzes around and can do no harm. You know, it's a little inconvenience here and there because I have to answer these questions from people <laughs> like yourself. How are you doing? Yeah. Because flies exist. They'll always exist. Right. If I had to run around when a fly comes in and, and deal with that and let it disrupt my day every day, I get nothing done. <clears throat> right. I'd be in a con constant state of fear and panic and frustration and annoyance and whatever it may be. You know, I've got the, the, the doors open here. There's a fly right here that just landed on my laptop case. And yeah. say g'day and go on all the business. Yeah, if it lands away, flick it off. You know, that's, that's right. my interpretation of these sort of uh, attacks, so to speak. But for somebody else that hasn't understood or, or gone through their own journey of how to deal yeah. with negative negativity from other people and I've got very dear friends and family members that care about what other people think of them mm. to, the, to the point that they will not live their authentic lives mm. and I'll say that and, again and the disconnect between what you believe is is your authentic self and the image you're sometimes forced um, by trying to you know, seek the approval of what I call the committee called they what are they going to think that disconnect between your authentic self and that image that you are portraying, do you believe that that can add to conflict within within one's heart? You sort of, of like living two lives and that becoming a disconnect and that being perhaps the source of dis-ease, given the word dis-ease is, 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 you know, that uneasiness of who you really are, your authentic self. Yeah, 100%. I honestly believe that. We know when we're not living authentically. Hmm. We know, you, you know, I know, you know, when you do something or say something or act in a way and you're like, fuck, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you know? that, that, that wasn't the best way to, for me to, to show up in the world. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't mean being all rosy and, and lovey dovey in every situation, no. you know, being authentic. Like I said before, what are you willing to do when the time comes? That time is coming soon for each and every one of us. Yeah. It, it's, I, I honestly believe that 2021, we, we are going to see what people are made of physically, right. emotionally, and spiritually. Yeah. And if you're waiting for a savior, there, there is no savior out there, but yourself. Mm. If you're waiting for, I'll, I'll stand up when another hundred people stand up next to me. 
that's the situation that's got us into this position. Correct. You stand up regardless, whether, whether you're alone or whether you've got an army next to you. But only you can decide when that is for you. But I, I honestly believe that time will be coming for each and every one of us. I've chosen to stand up now, uh, pretty much sort of alone in the public sphere. Yeah. One to show that nothing can happen, except maybe loss of income, maybe character assassination, maybe lies made up on a day-to-day -day basis and spewed out. But I'm still smiling, and which is which is a big life. Yeah, look, kudos to you, mate. I tell you what, you're an inspiration. And for anyone who's been through, you know, a long-term relationship, you mentioned there twelve established business relationships that you'd had a long-term partnership with, that who who almost overnight abandoned you for no good reason other than what appeared to be a you know a financial incentive for them to do so in their eyes. It was just um, fear. Fear, fear was fear. driving that decision for them. But That's all. on the other side of on the other side of that experience, obviously the initial shock of that for you was was significant. But then within literally, well, it wasn't really a shock or significant because again we'll go back to it. And my wife's here. We're like, what a fascinating day. Yeah. You know, I think the term we used was what a trip. Mm. What a, this life, what a, what a, what a trip this is. Or an event. <laughs> and we, we laugh at each other and go, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was meant to be doing something for, for three weeks, which was going to take me away from being with my wife. And as soon as right. this happened, uh, I called her up and said, Hey, listen, that's not happening. She goes, do you want to go to yoga? I said, yeah, that sounds like a great thing. And within an hour, I think we we're at yoga at seven in the morning. I called her at six and said, the three week thing I wasn't going to do, it's over because I wasn't going to see her and my family for three weeks. Right. I called her, I said, she goes, let's go to yoga. So at the end of that yoga class, and I, I went to the same yoga class this morning, it was three weeks to the day that I, that this happened. And when I was in that yoga class and the last 10 minutes we're doing Savasana, which is where you lie down and, and meditate at the end of, end of the class, I just had this, this knowing in my body, I was like, this is exactly where you're meant to be. This is exactly everything that should have happened. And it was a big smile on my face. So it wasn't so much of a shock. Yeah. It was a shock for lots of people, but it wasn't a shock for us. Yeah. It's like, okay, this is just another day. <clears throat> it's a, it's a interesting day. It's a fascinating day. Let's observe it. Let's see what comes up. And what came up was peace, relief, enjoyment, love, yeah. uh, wonder, being in awe of this life. It's like, wow, who else gets to experience this on this sort of level? This is, this is, this, is, you know. well, this transition from the old to the new, right? Yeah, it's a constant evolution. Yeah, this new future, this new uh, tomorrow. That is the, the adventure that you talk about. New relationships, new, new new business connections that have the potential to perhaps have a bigger influence and impact on 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 your cause than the previous ones ever did. Correct. And and the thing that I was about to enter into, well, and it was funny because the week leading up to it, I was like, I, usually I can see into the future a little bit, and and this one I was like, something's a little bit out of alignment. I, it just doesn't feel like it's going to happen this new project. I was like, so, and, and, and the three nights before I, I had disturbed sleep as well. I was like, and I, I usually sleep really well. I was like, something's not right. Something's about to shift. Something's about to change. You know, I, I know the signs. I was like, Fuck, what is this? What is this? And it was because it wasn't in complete alignment with, I, I, I cultivated a, a sort of with my ego, why it would be beneficial for me to do this for, for, a larger viewpoint for for people to experience what I was about to do, you know, and when it when it fell through, when it disappeared, I was like, of course, mm. but I was meant to be in that situation to actually feel that 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 misalignment or that dis ease because I was didn't have good sleep, so I had 
disease in my sleep. I was disturbed sleeps. And that's that a warning sign. That's that alarm. It's like there's something you're doing, which is an in, in complete authentic, uh, authentic alignment with yourself. So it was fascinating, you know, and I've only just come to realize that now talking to you now. So again, it just, it, it adds another, another flavor of, yeah, th this is exactly why that didn't happen. But you talk to me about, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're a leader, obviously leader of your home, uh, as much, as much as you're a leader of, of, a, of a, of a, of a movement. And I call it a movement, not in a, you know, any other way other than just a, a, a group of people that are, are beginning to, be educated around um, an alternative narrative to what the mainstream narrative is. And you're pioneering that in Australia, as, as, as many others are starting to come on board slowly. But when it comes to, uh, on a micro level, you, your family under your own roof, your two girls, Chile, uh, Chile and Indy, how do, you, how do you take them on the journey? So when something happens to dad um, that is not positive, that, that, that goes to the public courthouse of opinion through the media uh kids go to school they hear about it obviously how do you manage those little lives in your world to be as confident about a bright and optimistic tomorrow as you are well funnily enough they don't hear about it kid teenagers aren't reading the paper they teenagers these days don't watch the news right we don't have free to wear television in our house. So yeah. it, it, it's, it's always, you have to understand the perception of where people are. Yeah. Like where we live far North New South Wales. Uh, oh, it's amazing. We were my wife and I were talking about it the other day. It's, I think we were in Byron the other day where we've got one of our businesses and it's unique in a way because that tribe or that community, the mainstream is not their source of information. No, that's right. You would, I think you would be hard pressed to find anybody in that community that actually would <laughs> probably have free to air television or yeah. buy those newspapers or listen to talk back radio or listen to commercial radio. So when, so again, we have to be very careful that I don't like to generalize because of that, you know, even though I just generalized about a community, but when we identify with mainstream, that's because people choose to be associated with mainstream. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny because I used to do I used to, I've worked in mainstream for 20 years mm. and people would write these things going, uh, the show that you're on, it's a terrible show. It's this, that, and the other. And I would politely respond and saying, you have free will. Mm. You don't have to watch mm. that. Right. Why are you even commenting about something that you do not have to watch? How does it influence you? How can it influence you? Mm we have free will to listen to what we want to listen to, watch what we want to watch, read what we want to read, live where we want to live, how eat what we want to eat, drink what we want to drink, think what we want to think, behave like we want to behave, act like we, we, this is all free will. When we feel like we are in a situation in that mainstream narrative about whatever's going on in the world. I mean, it, we can choose not to be in that world if we choose to, mm. you know, there's certain things that may be coming down the pipeline that are part of some agendas, such as mandatory vaccinations. So you can't travel overseas or you have to, whatever this may be, you know, we have to be aware of these things, but we can also decide as a population to change that. If everybody stood up tomorrow and said, we're not having it as David Icke would say, there'd be no power. I've said this many times is if everybody in this country, for instance, Australia, 26 million of us, give or take, mm. decided to change the diet to one that we promote, which is a paleo ketogenic mm. ancestral diet. What, what would happen in that 24 in 
as little as 12 months, if every single person just decided to eat meat, seafood, organic or spray-free vegetables and fruits, organic eggs, nuts and seeds, fermented foods, what that one course of action would do, mainstream media would disappear. The medical industry would, they would lose 80% of their business. They would have to adapt. The pharmaceutical industry would implode. It would decay. It would, it would lose again, probably 80% of its business within a year. Think about this. Correct. Think about this. What would happen with the agricultural system of this country? It would adapt because the people would demand holistically farmed, well cared for animals, biodynamically farmed. And people could be listening to this going, oh, you know, we don't have this, the space or the ability to do that. Well, we are so smart as human beings, we would find solutions to all of these problems. We've already got all the solutions to all of our problems. Just that one act of changing our food would sequester more carbon. It would build topsoil. It would create more biodiversity. What that would influence, do you imagine the supermarkets? Mm. What a super, and I actually went to a, a supermarket last week for the first time in a long time. <laughs> and we went after a yoga class, my wife and I. We needed some, something from there. I forget what it was. But what an eye-opening experience that was. And I walked in there with no judgment, just in awe and wonder, just, just ob- observing. I walked down e- each and every aisle pretty much. I was like, wow, there is nothing here that resembles food. No. There is nothing here that resembles anything really that we need. I think we did pick up toilet paper. That's what we stopped for. But, and, but even that, we could get, get away with toilet paper if we chose to. Oh, yeah, I haven't got to that level yet. <laughs> But, and, and I was thinking about what would, how could this adapt if nobody ate or used any of these products that were in here? It would adapt. Businesses adapt. Yeah. And then guess what changes? As I said, the mainstream media changes because nobody's buying multinational foods. They're not buying pharmaceuticals. They're not buying this, that, and the other. So, mainstream media only exists through advertising. All right. And I've been threatened many, many times by certain, <laughs> by certain things that I've done. You're upsetting our sponsors. Okay. okay. Mm. So if we chose not to listen to commercial radio, if we chose not to, or choose not to watch commercial television, the whole, the whole country, and we ate that way, the multinational food corporations would either adapt to become natural and only supplying foods that benefited humanity and the planet. The television networks would probably disappear because there'd be no advertising, right? Everything would change. So when people say, how do we change the system? We change the system and it can be as simple as just changing our diet. If everybody did that, the whole fucking house of cards would fall over and we would rebuild a beautiful new world. I was just going to ask you a question, actually, and you've you just answered it, to paint a picture of what you see as the future of, you know, uh, wellness mentally, physically, and, and it's predominantly through thinking well, living well. You know, I, I've, since reading your books, I've been on the, I'll keep it simple, plants and proteins is... If it's not a plant or not a protein, it doesn't get a look in in this house. <laughs> it's pretty simple, isn't it? <laughs> it's not rocket science, right? Um, but how? I just I, I'm just mindful of time, Pete, because I know you've got plenty on your plate. But what what level of concern do you have around the apparent lack of, at this point in time, at least anyway, of unity around common sense when it comes to um, you know, organic foods, um, positive thinking. Uh, exp- Expecting it, being careful who you associate with and being open to change. There's such an opposition to that that if people are, choose to it, to your point, you know, immerse themselves in uh, an atmosphere that creates confusion, division, sedition, undermining anything that has anything to do with um, a, a solution that's different to what's being, you know, 
shoved down our throat for, for a better, for, for want of a better word. I, I would have thought that in a country like Australia, the uptake around common sense and unity around that would have been quicker. Do you see that? Do you see that as part of the short term happening, or do you think we've got a way to go before people get sick and tired of being sick and tired of proving to themselves that, that what they're doing is not working? Hmm. Good question, Mark. Really good question. I have an answer, but I don't think it's the one that people want to hear, to be honest. But this is my observation over the last decade of, of promoting that one thing that we just spoke about, which is diet, hmm. which isn't the be all and end all. You can eat all the organic protein and plants in the world. And if you're sleeping next to somebody that you do not like anymore, or they do not like you or respect you or love you, or vice versa, then you might suffer disease. If you are eating all the most beautiful organic food and going to work every day in a job that is contributing to the destruction of the planet or the destruction of minds mm. or is not fulfilling your creative expression, you may suffer disease. You know, it may be if you have unresolved trauma from your childhood, you know, whatever that may be, you could develop disease, even if you're still eating all the organic food in the world right. on the same thing. If you were living your life authentically and not eating organic food, you may also live a beautiful disease free life because you're living your authentic self right. and you're not concerned, you know, that, so we need to be very careful that we just don't say eating well is the be all and end all, but it's a, it's a really good place to start. <laughs> it's usually the easiest place to start. Right. So, going back to your question about common sense and what do I think needs to happen? Well, ideally we all do what I just said as of, you know, if you can get this, this podcast out to the whole population mm. and everybody does adapts their food tomorrow. I think we would see a massive change mm. emotionally, physically, and spiritually. A lot of spiritual leaders that I've spoken to and shamans in that context all agree that, to have higher states of consciousness, to expand our consciousness and our open our hearts, loving yourself with nutrient dense food is one of the keys. Mm. Uh, I think that gets missed on, in some of the wellness circles, unfortunately still. But um, what I've noticed over the last decade is we've, I used to share a story every single day on my social media of somebody that had, either reverse type two diabetes, put their autoimmune disease in remission, yeah. beat cancer, had children with autism that had um, improved their behavioral, um, their behaviors. And the list goes on, you name it, it's happened. IBS, Crohn's disease. It got to the point after I shared probably the 3000th story of, over however many years that I decided not to share it anymore. I was like, okay, that job is done. I've put that out there. I've, I've shared that this works. The underlying factor for most of those people was they had to hit rock bottom first. What I tried and still attempt to do is question why do we need to, as a, as a species, have to hit rock bottom before we change? Why, can't, why are we not programmed with prevention as our driving force? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've hardwired myself now that prevention is much better than a cure. Right. So I live the lifestyle I choose now so that I want to reach 100 plus years. Cognitively fantastic, physically fantastic, spiritually, emotionally, all of that fantastic so the best of my ability with the tools that i have without even obsessing about it because once you start this everything becomes fucking easy it's it's not work to do this to cook a piece of fish and some vegetables there's no it's not it's not hard work to grow some veggies or some herbs in the garden it's not hard work to go for a walk along the beach or to stretch or to say something nice and connect with your wife or your children or nature it's not fucking difficult. It's the no. easiest thing in the world. Not doing it mm. is difficult. Abusing ourselves day in and day out. And then they go, the crows, the crows are one of some of the most wise birds. And I'm glad that they've uh, decided to, to journey while um, 
flying over when I'm talking about this. Yeah. To not do that is hard work. So my perception, unfortunately, at this particular point in human history in Australia, for instance, because that's where most of the people that have, and I've had 100,000 people do our course and not one of them have gotten sicker from doing our course at zero. Amazing. Now compare that to something like Weight Watchers where only 3% of people achieve their results. We had a we hundred percent success rate. Oh. Now, but those people had hit rock bottom. Why is it that alcoholics need to have a near death experience or hurt somebody? or destroy their relationships and their families until they want to help themselves. I'm witnessing this with a friend of mine at the moment. I do not think, I, I have a feeling they're not going to make it. They'll either kill themselves or somebody very dear to them. And there's nothing I can do about that. I have to sit and watch and observe and, and offer assistance and guidance so and that's what i said to you before at the start of this that perhaps 2021 is a time where people are going to be offered an invitation to step up to prevent what is coming down the line prevention rather than acquiesce or sit back in fear and allow what is coming whether it be mandatory vaccinations, whether it be tracking, whether it be a great reset and a financial collapse, communistic state that is the agenda, because that agenda already has shown its hand and it's out there publicly, it does not mean that that necessarily is going to happen. It just means that's one narrative, it's one storyline yeah. from a certain group of people. And anybody who thinks this is a conspiracy theory, it's, it's, it's gone way beyond that now. It's, it's the absolute truth. Mm. But it doesn't mean it has to be reality because you and I and the population can stand up and, and co-create a new reality by saying, no, mm. we don't want that to happen to our children. We don't want that to happen to our business. We don't want COVID-19, what the powers that the government have just and the health ministers and the police have enforced, that's not how, what I signed up for when I chose to come into this human form and live my life. Right. So we have an opportunity now for prevention. Prevent the demise of humanity. Unfortunately, from what I've witnessed over the last decade, and this is just my perception, is that it could go either way and it probably will go the way that the agenda would like that they will break the human spirit and soul until humanity is hit rock bottom. Cause that's what I've witnessed for people to heal themselves and to grow a pair or to have the guts to love themselves once again, yeah. then giving away their power to their parents or their friends or their partners or their kids or whoever the fuck it is they give their power away to, the government, the medical fraternity, mm. the bullies, their friends that they don't even like because they don't support them anyway. Right. If it gets to that stage, each and every one of us is responsible. I'm choosing now to stand up because I'm for prevention. <laughs> like, yeah. Come on. <laughs> it's fucking there. It's coming. It's here. Right. It's here. Every day they take a little bit more and they tell you what they're about to do. You open up. It's it then it's not even hidden anymore. No, it's very the subtle. U, the UK, Canada, the USA, democratic States. Western Australia, Victoria, New Zealand, China. Mm. It's, it's happening. Mm. And COVID-19, what we've just experienced, I've said this before, I'll put it in a chef's terminology, is that 
there's certain restaurants around the world where you pay a lot of money and it's, you go for a three Michelin star degustation and you're sitting there for three or four hours while the chef brings out 20 courses of their beautiful creations. Mm. COVID-19 was the first bite, the first course of what's coming. Mm. And everyone fucking ate it. Mm. No one walked out of that restaurant. Mm. Well, very few people did and said, you know what? That doesn't taste so good. I, uh, no. <laughs> whatever they're cooking up, I don't want to experience anything more. That actually left a really bad taste in my mouth. I, you know, I've spat mine out. That's a shit recipe. Right. And uh, my kids, I'm not going to bring them to that restaurant. Mm. But most of the population ate it. Yeah. Whether they liked it or they didn't like it, they ate it. Yeah. It's a fantastic analogy, Pete. And, um, Unfortunately, what's coming will make COVID-19 look like fucking kindergarten. So, but... So the power of the choice, the power of the decision, it's all a choice, right? I mean, you've talk, touched on, you know, encouraging and inspiring Chile and India to decide what allows, or you've helped them, obviously, with not having home, television in your home. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's such a powerful time in history where we have to really intentionally decide what goes in through our ears and through our eyes that, that shapes our heart, which ultimately shapes our outcomes. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it could get worse. It could get better. You know, that's, that's the crystal ball. Who, who would have known at the start of this year that, uh, you know, you'd be facing into what you're facing into now and probably the passions that you have in your life and have had for years are now really starting to, you're starting to, you know, flow in that more so now than ever in a way that has more traction than ever to inspire others around, around you know, a, a healthier lifestyle. Well, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's fascinating, Mark, because, you know, I sit here and, you know, I've, I've, people always talk about success. What's success? And I, I ask them the question because they say you're successful. I say, well, what's your definition of success? Mm. It always stops people in their track when you ask them. Mm. You know, for some, it's money. For some, it's freedom. For some, it's creative expression. Right. For some, it's, it's having a wonderful relationship with their family or their loved ones or themselves, you know, and it can be any of these flavors. And mm. I've, I've been asked this this year, why do you do what you do? You're risking everything. I know well, that those things that you think that I'm risking, they're, they're immaterial to me. You know, if I, if I get locked up, they can never take me for doing this. You know, I, I could easily have sat back on my hands over the years and just gone about my business and been wealthier or more comfortable as they would say, but that definitely wasn't what I came here to do. I know it. There's, you talk about earlier the disease that comes, you know, and, when I think about shut up, Pete, don't do it, that creates disease in me. When I stand up, that doesn't create a disease in me. So, but that doesn't mean everybody else has to do that either. For some people, I've, I've said this, some people are warriors. Mm. They're here to fight. I'm not really a fighter, but I will stand in truth. And I, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a, a ring in the alarm for people yeah. if they choose to hear it. Other people will hold space and meditate for themselves. Other people will create a community garden for people that can't, haven't got access to fresh fruit or herbs or whatever. Each of, in every one of us has our special gifts, our creative expression. Some people will go into law, for instance, and try to change what's happening from a legal standpoint. That's their gift. Other people are amazing doctors that are being censored and, and deplatformed at the moment. I'm interviewing those people at the moment. They're amazing. They're, they're risking their, I'm interviewing a guy on Sunday, just had his medical license taken away in Oregon because he, he actually did a study on vaccinated versus unvaccinated children and proved that vaccinated children are worse off health-wise than unvaccinated. Right. And the medical association this week stripped him of his license. Right. And I emailed him, he goes, I want to share my message. Hmm. 
I will do whatever it takes to share my message, regardless of the repercussions of loss of income, loss of reputation. They'll lock me up. I will share my message as far and as wide as I can while I've got the ability to do so. Mm. So there's people out there with certain gifts, you know, and there are amazing people that volunteer. There's amazing nurses. There's amazing, whatever it may be. So many amazing people. I, I think the original people of Australia hold the key, to be honest with you. I think they hold the wisdom that can get us through this. Mm. So everything that I said before about what's coming, I also believe that, we have all the answers and solutions to create a better existence for us. I honestly do. And I do believe the tribal people of this country hold that key. I'm working with them at the moment on helping them. Well, not that they need my help, but walking side by side with them and learning from them. Yes. To, I mean, if you want to see fucking resilience and come back, you look at the people of Australia, the original people of this country. Right. You think, having a fucking hard day, a hard life. But this culture has had to endure, had to sacrifice. And yet their spirit, they're coming. Yeah. Their, their heartbeat will be heard and we will hear their songs. Mm. We will learn their history and we will co-create a much more beautiful and harmonious environment for our coming generations, whether it's next generation or the one after or the one after. But when, when you see what those beautiful people have had to endure and yet every day they get up and they show us how to do it. So I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but there's, um, I, I going back to what I was saying, you know, we're opening a health retreat in early part of next year. And I was out on the property yesterday with my wife and it's got its own water supply. We've put it completely off grid. And we were doing this regardless of COVID-19 anyway. It's always been my dream to see how self-sustainable I can be and to create a space for healing mm. for, for people to come and, and experience and work with some of the greatest practitioners and therapists from around the country, if not the world, when we do allow them to, to travel here again. And that to me is success because success means doing, turning your dreams into reality. Right. Am I, have I got doubt, self-doubt about that? I do. Will it succeed financially? I don't know. It's not even part of the, the, the plan. It's like first step is create it. I think they used to say that in Wayne's world or something like that. Build it and they will come. Create it and it feels like it's in perfect alignment. Hmm. And the last three weeks, again, has like, okay, well, you're spreading yourself a bit thin over there, so now we're focusing on this. And it just feels so beautiful. and. I know with my own power supply, my own water supply, and to be able to grow my own food while we're allowed to, I can live a sovereign life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody can tell me what I can and cannot do in that experience. And I've created that experience. And going back to my children, they get to choose their own reality too. Mm -hmm. they're, they're nearly 16 and coming up to 15 soon and mm -hmm. two wonderful children with separated parents and extended family and and they are not like me and i'm so glad they're not and they're not like their mum or their stepmom or this that they're themselves right. and what they do with their life is like you know, i i've had to they go to a, a fancy school and they do hours of homework every night i went to a public school and i wagged a lot I wanted to go surfing and hang with my mates. Right. And I say to my kids, oh, let's wag school tomorrow and let's go surfing. And they're like, no, dad, we're going to school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, cool. That's their experience. They're going through that for whatever reason mm. they're doing it. And mm. I, have to, I have to trust in that experience. These kids might change the world. Or they might come and live on the 
farm with us or the retreat and work out there. I don't know. Yeah. I have no expectations except my intention is for them to grow and to evolve and to work their own shit out. <laughs> well, I got an amazing example in you, Pete, um, in terms of the way you think and how you approach life and, and, and the good days and the not so good days. It's just so, so inspiring. And um, look, mate, I just want to thank you for joining us today. It's been awesome. Could you just leave us with, obviously for someone who's looking to, you know, fast track a comeback, they've, they've had a knockout punch, they're in that place right now where they're not quite sure, you know, how to get up. What are the three things you do each day that just continues to ensure that you have optimal performance mentally, physically, spiritually? There's three things that you, that are just on autopilot for you now that you've built into your, you know, day-to-day -day routine. Uh, pretty simple. I wake up in the morning and I'm very grateful that I've woken up. <laughs> I am when I wake up and, uh, I sleep with the, the windows open, the fly screen off is, <laughs> I don't want the mozzies in. Uh, but I get to witness the sunrise every morning, every morning. And I'm grateful for that. So the first thing I do when I wake up is I say to myself, I'm grateful for you for experiencing this life. And then I go through different things that I'm grateful for. I'm grateful that I can witness the sunrise at this time of the day. I'm grateful that my dog or our dog is with me. And I'm grateful that I can stay quiet so she doesn't come up and lick my face just yet. And uh, so I have a lot of fun with my gratitude practice in the morning. And then of the night time, I, generally I fall, I'm falling asleep by 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. Mm. And I'm grateful for that because for 20 years I worked nights in the restaurant industry. Yeah. So now every night that I'm falling asleep early in the night, I'm grateful for this experience that I get to have a deep, beautiful sleep in a bed yeah. at this time of night because I know how, how healthy it is for my body and brain and spirit Great. to go to bed early. So I wake up with gratitude, I go to bed with gratitude and all throughout the day, I'm in awe and wonder of not only what manifests and, and happens in the day, but also I'm in awe and wonder of me. And I've had headlines before that have ridiculed when I said, because they've said, who is your biggest inspiration? And I've said, I am my biggest inspiration hmm. because it is the truth. Our stories are ones of heroes' journeys. Mm. Once we start comparing ourselves to other people that have done it worse, done it easier, got more, got less, we can sympathize and empathize and, and observe and help if we need to or learn if we have to. But ultimately, we have to inspire ourselves and be in awe and wonder of who we are because we all have this amazing gift to share with ourselves as that remembrance of who we are. We're beings of unconditional love mm. and everything between feeling that is an opportunity to understand why we have another barrier or armor around our heart. Mm. And every day we get the opportunity to peel another layer of that. And the existence of being a human is to peel another layer off every single day and share a little bit more of that, our hearts with ourselves and with others. And it's fucking hard sometimes, I tell you. It really is. But it's beautiful at times. It's beautiful a lot of the times. But we have to feel all of these emotions because that's what we're here to do. We're here to feel, we're here to remember, we're here to heal and we're here to experience. And what we're seeing a lot of times is we are numbing ourselves through all these beautiful tools that we've created to distract ourselves from that. Most people use alcohol. A lot of people use television or entertainment. Many people use food as that warm hug 20 times a day, 
to feel that love, feel that energy, feel that comfort. But it's fleeting. So these addictive natures and qualities that we do is just another form of distraction. And just distract us from that numbness because we don't want to feel. So when we get to feel mm. the good, the bad, the ugly, the amazing. Yes, and perfect. She's come back to say hello now. You know, when we get to feel mm. and experience, mm. we get to be in their state. Yeah. You know, no judgment, just pure survival and unconditional love. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. So yeah. uh, that's my rant for the day. So th <laughs> thanks, Mark, for having us. Uh, look, it's just been an honour honor to have you here, mate. And uh, there's so much in what you've said. And um, I just encourage those of you watching this, go back and watch it more than once because there's so much content, so much... Uh, life experience and wisdom in, in what Pete's had to share today. So thank you, Peter. Bless your heaps, mate. And um, may you be ahead. Thanks, mate. I think this T-shirt sums it up a little bit. It says, I'm mostly peace, love and light. Yeah. And, <laughs> and a little go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if people want to connect with you on a deeper level, Pete, where do they go? I know you've got Evolve TV. Is it Evolve TV? is that correct? Yeah, it's evolvenetwork.tv. Evolvenetwork.tv, so yeah. Evolve correct, yeah. I've always wanted to set up a site that would be uncensored, that could house and, and host all of my content. Uh, so there's a lot of content on there. Our, our documentaries, The Magic Pill and The Magic Plant. The Magic Pill talks about the power of food as a form of medicine. And The Magic Plant talks about cannabis as, a, as another uh, healing modality. Uh, and in that, we've also got small episodic Docu, uh, docu-series as well, where we talk about different plant medicines as well as breathing techniques, meditation, tea ceremonies. Uh, in there as well, we have meal plans that we talked about, ketogenic, paleo, budget, carnivore. We've got plant-based coming along too. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of recipes, thousands coming soon actually because we need to put it somewhere. Um, and we've got all the podcasts I've recorded a couple of hundred podcasts, so there's a couple of hundred hours of podcasts which, which span everything that I've just spoken about with really articulate speakers from the health and wellness space, doctors, uh, nutritionists, dietitians, as well as shamans, uh, sex experts, uh, relationships experts, farming experts, mm -hmm. everything that sort of connects to a, a long-term sustainable healthy existence are the people that I love to interview. Um, and we've also got the video interviews as well of these people. We've got different documentaries on there as well that, uh, that have been censored on different platforms. So we've got pandemic indoctrination on there. We're about to launch Vaxxed and, uh, Andrew Wakefield's new one on there as well. And we've got uh, every week there's new stuff. I've got cooking classes on there as well for people. So that costs a hundred dollars a year or $10 a month. Uh, that's Australian dollars if anyone wants to join, but that's probably the best spot because it, it won't be censored. And if they do censor us, I'll pop it up somewhere else. Um, yeah. This is a little bit of a spiritual war and a, a war on consciousness on our physical bodies, our emotional bodies and our spiritual bodies that is happening at the moment. So my, the thing that I offer people is solutions, yeah. solutions, 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 because there's no point knowing something without being able to act on it. And again, I'll go back. If you can just start with cooking, like you said, plants and protein or animals everything will become a lot easier yeah. <laughs> and you'll spend a lot less time thinking about food too true <laughs> chef pete evans thanks thanks again for your time it's just absolute uh delight to talk to you we'll talk again soon thanks mate sorry about the swear words love you all see ya you too, mate. Bye bye. wow what a powerful interview can i encourage you to watch this interview again there's so much content in it. This time, take notes, take a pen and a notepad and just jot down some of the key elements that Pete talked about in that interview. I know they'll add value to your world and your comeback journey. So thanks again to Chef Pete Evans for his time today. In addition, in the descriptions panel below, I have some resources for you. One of those is my 10 breakthrough steps. These are 10 breakthrough steps that I adopted in my life to help me fast track my comeback from my serious life setback, a marriage and business collapse a few years ago. 
I was in a world of hurt back then, and these are 10 things that I did to help me rebuild in a solid way. And today, I've rebuilt completely in every area of my life. So I'm very thankful for that. And I know these these key key points, these 10 breakthrough steps will help you do the same. In addition, I have a free webinar there as well called Comeback Heroes Webinar. Check that out. I know it'll add value to your comeback journey. So thank you again for joining us today. I hope this has added some value to your comeback, your mighty comeback. I know your best days are ahead. Stay strong and I'll see you on the next video.